Hey, and welcome back to Theoretically Practical. My name's Brent, and uh, today we're going to be working on something that I uh, I sort of put down a while back. It's uh, the Defender, or I should say the Defender. Um, if you're watching this, this means that I at least intend, but I, I'm fairly certain. If you're watching this, by the end of the episode, this will be attached to that and that and be in there. Then I'll be able to sit in the driver's seat and rev the engine instead of making the noises with my face like I do now sometimes when I'm feeling low. Anyhow, so uh, I was missing some parts, but they have sit long since come in. I should be good to go. I think I have everything to, I, I definitely have everything to put the clutch assembly. Well, actually the clutch is on, but the, the clutch arm assembly and all that, all that garbage. Got everything I need to put that back together again. I have everything I need to put, well, the two of those just bolt together. So yes, I have everything I need by definition. And then we stab it up in there. I've got a new radiator sitting over there. You get it in the box right there. I got a new radiator. I got everything I think that I need to do it. Let's get it done. All right, I got the, uh, the transmission there on the engine hoist. We're gonna stab those two together. Uh, after that, I'll probably actually pick the whole uh, engine up and uh, Well, actually after that if the engine's still stable. I'll put the uh, the transfer case on as well But uh, I may or may not get tippy at that point But if I could stab the transfer case on there great and then lift up that whole thing uh, That would be good except I don't want to lift it up yet because I realize I want to Do the timing first, but I don't know. I'm just going to keep on moving forward because if I wait till everything feels right, well, just, it just will never get done. Oh, beauteous. Okay, we're together. All right, I'm just gonna, that's it. I just wanted to show stabbing it together. Um, it worked. It was, it was as easy as I could have hoped it would be. So, thumbs up. All right, guys, there she is, all bolted together. Um, I really hope it doesn't drop. Uh, no, no, everything's good. Um, I did not put on, those are the rear motor mounts and those are the rear motor mount, mounts? I don't know. They were funky to get out and I can't remember how I did it because it was like a shameful number of year, years ago. So, um, but uh, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna leave them off. I'm gonna get this up in there. I've got a load leveler, which is totally key to making this situation work. Um, nicely enough, the Defender engine has built in front and rear brackets, but it kind of makes it seem like they were absolutely prepared to have you remove the engine a bunch of times. But whatever, it makes life easier for me. I did not do the timing yet because I realized that I could do that on the floor or I could do it, you know, right at the right level and also have something to torque against so I don't have I don't chance knocking over the engine or something stupid like that. So it just seemed like an easier way to do it all around. Um, I have to remember Ryan me to tighten this up because I just put that in but I'm not quite sure the way that it's supposed to Orient I think this way would be a problem with the the heat of the exhaust But this way may fetch up it might need to go like that. I don't quite know The the old one on my other engine is in a weird spot and it, I never liked how it came out So uh, hopefully this is better. All we really got to do is get these bad boys here into those little slots there. So I'm going to put this power steering pump out of the way and I'll put the clutch, I'll let that dangle. And then one of the grounds, I got to put bigger grounds on though, because this is a paltry ground, but it'll have plenty of grounds. So everything's looking pretty clear, nothing for it to really get hung up on. So We'll stab it in. Okay. 
Now at least we're, we're inside the lines. I just realized I hadn't connected these linkages right here, which I'll do now in the least safe place possible. This linkage needs to go through to here, and this needs to be connected to that. So I'm gonna do that. Luckily, they're not, they're not all that bad. It's just I know underneath the vehicle, they're gonna be an absolute pain in the butt to get at. Hey, look at that, just like magic, it's all good. So now I can, I think that locks and unlocks the differential, and then I've got uh, uh, like low, neutral, and high. So it all moves good, excellent. Keep firing. All right, I'll keep stabbing this on in there. So that needs to get to there, but that's fetching up on there, the cast iron part, not the aluminum part. And it just doesn't quite want to go where it needs to go. Um, I'm gonna twist up the level some more and see how far I can make with this. I might need to get another jack or something under it. It also doesn't help that my hoist is just not quite long enough reach. So that's, that's good. Hey, look at that, they're both in. We'll see if nuts go on either one of those motor mounts, but I just didn't, I needed two people. I needed two people, but I did it with one, so I guess that's good enough. Um, mount right there, it's definitely in the pocket. So I just have a jack under the back side of it for tonight because I'm done for today. Hopefully tomorrow I'll get the other two rear mounts installed. That'll be, that won't be fun, but it won't be as difficult as this. This was rougher than it needed to be. I don't know. There's probably a way where you, you put the pucks in first and then you drop the engine down on or some stupid garbage that I just didn't, didn't get the memo. So. Man, there's a lot of bolts before it'll start. Like at least 10. All right, guys, well, if you'll pardon the shadows, you can see that the motor mount there and there have been installed. I always thought it was kind of funky that that side is bolted to the uh, transmission and that side is bolted to the transfer case, but they are pretty much in line, so I guess it's a clever way of doing it. Um, front motor mounts are all bolted up tight now. Those. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, rear motor mounts, oh, just easy, easy, easy to get done. Uh, it really helped though that uh, what I did is I put a, well, you can see, I put a, uh, a four by four across and hung it on a ratchet strap. And then once it was up high enough to be at a good working height for me, uh, I used my transmission jack to put that up. So next thing's going in is the gas tank. Um, there it is right there. It is pretty dirty. I never ended up washing it and I'm not going to now. I'm going to hose the whole thing down with uh, the black uh, New Hampshire oil undercoating when I'm done. So I don't think it matters all that much. The one thing is, it uses this funky bracket like this that goes under here. And I just don't know the order of operations. I think I have to put this bracket on and then this especially since uh, I think this would be more complicated if I had the the, the uh, sill rail, whatever you'd call it, in. So, and then the, uh, the two points there and there on that outrigger, if you can see them, there's one of them, 
uh, are where the back of the tank mounts. And for some reason, the rear of the tank mounts with bolts, but the back of the tank mounts with this great big bolt with a rubber isolator. I, uh, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. All right, there's a 70% chance this thing's gonna fall over, but uh, it does give me a better working view, so. Um, all right, one thing I did that was smart is I knew there was a lot of, uh, of these, uh, I think they're eight mil uh, metric fasteners, and I got a bunch of brand new nylock nuts to put them on with, uh, cause I didn't wanna thread locker all of them, and the more old stuff I take apart with lock washers, the the less I think I'm okay with using them. Um, a lot of them I find split in multiple pieces, just barely hanging on underneath, and I don't know. So I kind of stopped using them because I don't think they help, and I put Threadlocker Blue on everything, and I think that's better. Tell me what you think. I don't know. It's just my own observation. Now, they make fancy, like, Nordlock things that are pretty skookum, but uh, as far as just regular old uh, split lock washers, I'm not really of the opinion that they do anything. Oh yeah, always make sure you empty your fuel tank before you take it out and you put it in. I didn't empty this before I took it out and it was a pain. And I'll tell you what, putting it in, man, I could carry two or three of these. Come on, in you go. Crap. Let you guys see what I'm looking at. This bracket there is not gonna let this go up. The one I just bolted on and said I might have the rotor wrong. I remembered there was something I did not like about this because this is bolting into this. So this can't go back any further. I don't see how you can bolt that on afterwards. But I don't, why would it, why would you not hang it the, like why do it this way? Come on. I'll give it a go. Give it a go. I probably cut one of these nuts off when I when I did it and was like, oh, that's gonna be a pain in the ass for future, Brent. Thanks, past Brent, you big dumb jerk. All right. Oh, drop the nuts. All right, the gas tank is uh, in and bolted. And on the back side here, I've got the uh, the tube hooked up that you can't really see, maybe, and the the uh, air tube hooked up, and then these two back ones are bolted in place. So that is in. Uh, then I came over here because I was feeling it, and also because I didn't want to forget it for later. And I put the uh, the clutch slave cylinder line on. I did I did pump a little fluid out of here, just so if there's any crap in the line, I would just flush it out. Um, I think for the first start, it's also in the way of the uh, exhaust because the exhaust comes right down through here. I think for the first start, I'm going to leave the exhaust off because I do need to bleed this before I put the exhaust on. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So I do have the lines run up here from the fuel tank there, right here. Um, I'm gonna bring the whole thing clear out from underneath the truck and bring it on down and hook those up. And then that is what I was gold to do for today to make this thing happen. Tomorrow's goal is gonna be, um, I don't know. Oh, the timing. Gonna get the timing set tomorrow and hopefully get the radiator in. Cause then that would put me at uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, Thursday would be the first start day. So I think we can do it. I also got to bleed everything, which is going to take forever in a day. But I'm going to pull out the, uh, the glow plug so that I, I don't have any chance of starting it up on like the oil in the cylinder from shipping or whatnot. So I'll pull the glow plugs out. That'll help me prime the oil system and uh, the fuel system. And I got to pump it over to prime the fuel system. So, you know, it doesn't make much sense to to try to like prime it with a with a drill or something like that it's just going to be a, a pain in the ass 
and we'll just we'll just prime it by cranking it over but we'll we'll have to crank it over a lot anyways and i'll probably crack the return line from the turbo just to make sure there's a little bit of oil coming out of that so Oh no, I'm just pushing something. Okay, that's fine. I am about to crush that though. Okay, so you just have a few lines to hook up here. We have the, uh, is the tank, the return from the pump. You got this line, which is from the tank to the, to the lift pump. That's the injection pump. I have this little line here, which is from the lift pump to the filter. And then we got this line here from the filter to the injection pump. And that's it for plumbing. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get this done today. I might be missing a copper washer on this one. I'm gonna ignore it because uh, it'll definitely tell me if that's a problem pretty Pretty quick like. I probably have one somewhere too. Oh yeah, that's not gonna seal, but. You know what? It'll let me technically fulfill my goal for the day and technically correct is of course the best kind of correct. So. And who knows, maybe, maybe the gods of sealing things poorly will be smiling on me. Doubtful. I'll pull this bad boy up. Slip it on over there. You might be wondering why, why is he plugging the brake booster into this weird pump thing on the side of it? Well, it's a turbocharged diesel. It doesn't actually make any uh, vacuum to speak of, but it does have a special vacuum pump just to run the brake booster. Because why not? We're getting there, one little thing at a time. The big things, the biggest, most important thing we need to hook up is this coil of copper wire right here, which you can't see. Because this goes to an actual oil pressure gauge and not to a stupid idiot light that doesn't come on when you need it. I'm not still sour about that though. Oh no, wait, I will be for the rest of my life. Especially since I was like, I should put an oil gauge on there. I mean, it's no big deal. I can do it whenever. Never again. Never again. So yeah, um, that was all I wanted to do today. Oh, I guess I guess I can do electrical tomorrow because I have to hook up one wire there to the to the fuel solenoid. Um, I'm not going to hook up that pressure because I don't have a T for it. So I'm just going to hook the uh, the pressure gauge up. The one wire for the um, heaters, they're not called heaters, glow plugs, and then the starter. And, uh, you know, I can leave the alternator wiring till after it runs because that's all she's got. It's so simple, which is good because so am I. Simple, that is. All right, I think for starters, we're going to get the timing set and the timing chest put back together again. Yeah, I think this will be fine. I gotta look at it and make sure that it makes sense. I'm not sure if I can have this 360 degrees. No, 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 because this is the same as this. So this turns once for this, this turns twice for that. Okay, all right, just going over this in my head. So I've got a 3 8 drill bit in here. There is a proper nine millimeter locking tool or a nine millimeter drill bit. 3 8 drill bit fits that quite nicely. So that's what I'm using. There is also talk of a tool that goes in the waiting plug in the back and hooks into the, you know, whatever. You gotta line up this, this keyway with that notch and then there's a dimple on one of these which needs to be lined up with another arrow right there. That's, that's it. I don't know that this needs any crazy amount of attention other than that, I think, so. Uh, get a good quality belt too, don't buy cheap stuff and I, I don't know if it's recommended for Land Rovers in particular, but I do like to replace the, uh, the tensioner 
every time. I don't know. But this has only has a 60,000 uh, mile interval, which is suspiciously low, but definitely not something to ignore. You know, you could probably do this every other time would be fine. I mean, especially if it, if it feels really good. I mean, this, this is brand new, so of course it feels nice. So, um, yeah. I don't know if I can do it with the, uh, with this on there yet. So I'm going to try to though. Just fiddle it on over. So right now this, this, this is to here to here is fine. I can't go another tooth. Can I? I can't remember. This is going to just, I'm just going to fight with this for a minute and we'll see what happens. Uh, I think it'll be all right though. Uh, it's just a matter of getting everything lined up properly. I think I am going to take this off though, just to make my life a little easier. So the trick is though, is you don't want like right here, that's definitely too loose. It's going to tighten up. So what I might do is back this up one, put it on and then tighten it back against that, you know, kind of thing where I'll fiddle them around. But we'll come back to the thing on. You also need a uh, half inch drive torque wrench to, to tension it. I've done it without it because I didn't have one and needed to make it work. I, I think you can get away with it, but I won't this time. Not a brand new engine, that's for sure. All right, I still have to double check the tightness on this and uh, double check it, but you can maybe see this hole lines up, this dot lines up, and this arrow lines up to that flat there and the center of that, everything lines up really good. I will say as far as the uh, injection pump goes, you may be off half a tooth you may have to make some, I think my other one was off a half a tooth somewhere in the system. Try it a couple times. If you can't get it to not be out half a tooth, then it, that's probably just the way it is. That's what I was told. And I think my, my old engine when I did the time belt was off by half a tooth and it never, never caused it any trouble because that engine blew up because of this fitting right here letting go and not because of the timing belt. The timing belt was in good shape. So I got a good amount of tension there, good amount of tension there. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to just uh, double check the tension on it and then uh, start putting on the timing chest. So before I put the timing chest cover on, on here, I'm going to take some brake clean and just spray it on a rag and wipe everything down really thoroughly. I'm not going to use a gasket. I'm going to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two thin layers of Permatex on both surfaces, very thin layers. We'll see. It's my opinion that that's going to seal better than trying to get a paper gasket to sit on this whole thing. Uh, I don't know. I could be wrong. Tell me, tell me what you guys do or if you think I'm an idiot. It's fine. So by a small coating, this is what I'm talking about. So I just paint the surface using my finger as a brush. And I don't know, I think it, it helps to let it sit for a couple of minutes as well before you put them together. Um, the other thing is, if you can, if you can afford the time, don't uh, tension it up quite all the way. Do that the next day. I, that's what the instructions say for the best sort of sealing. And you really need the best sort of sealing for this. So you might be asking me, you got all those holes. They got all sorts of different size bolts. What are you gonna do? Well, uh, honestly, if you search for like 200 TDI uh, timing belt, there's a wonderful article on landrover.co.uk. And one of the steps he talks about is putting all of the, all of the bolts into a piece of wood. And he's actually done it. And if you can see, written all the lengths down. So that's gonna make my life a lot easier though. I'll have to do a few conversions. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's the plan. All right, that covers back on and I, I put the bolts for the water pump in as well because what I was trying to do is make sure that I could get all bolts with this style head flange bolts. So they're all the same 10 millimeter because previously it just had some random bolts with washers on it. Just, 
it was mostly just, I, it doesn't really matter from the point of view of any sort of functionality, but it's really annoying to have to use two wrenches when you should only need one. So I went through and matched those all up. I had bought some new ones. I thought I bought enough to replace them all, but apparently not. But I got all the right kind of bolts there. And at the 11th hour, I decided I'm going to put the new water pump in. The old water pump, it's not really, I mean, it's rusty, but from, mostly from sitting. It doesn't have any play or wiggle to it, but I got a new water pump. I'm putting it in. That seems like the smart way to do it. Again, I'm going to go just for the Permatex. I'm, I, I do clean this off with a brake clean first, and I'm going to clean this off. Put the Permatex on there, pull all the bolts, put them on here so I don't get them lost. Permatex that up and slap this bad boy on like that. And then um, I'm actually thinking, even though I wasn't going to do this quite yet, but it's, it's just easy to do it now. I'll put the uh, power steering pump and the alternator and install those uh, just because it's the right time to do it. I don't know how far I'm going to get tonight, but if I had that done, then I could do a lot of the, I could plumb this into the water pump, um, plumb the heater core into the water pump, just that's an easy thing to forget. Uh, you know, get a, get a bunch more stuff, just keep picking away, and I think for the dipstick, I'm going to put it right there. I think that's the spot for it, so I'm going to tighten that down as well, so... That would be a good good goal to get to tonight, and uh, then we'll see. Got a couple more days this week. This is a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot of stuff to do quick, but you know, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. All right, guys, I think it's about time to call it for today. Not this video, but uh. You know, the timing chest is all put together, the water pump's on, the the uh, alternator's in, the power steering pump's in. I gotta figure out the wiring. There's a suspicious number of things that just end with uh, their brown wires, they end with that. I don't know which one goes where. I gotta just double check it. The wiring on this is real simple. All right, guys, well, it's all wired up. There's battery right there. You can see my luxuriously appointed interior yeah so anyways i have not put a battery in this or tried to start it or done anything to it in four years so we're going to turn to the on position we should hear a click and then a second click and that'll let me know the glow plug relay is working so we'll do that first all right that was the first click And that was the second click, so that's good. So now we're just gonna we're gonna give the starter the slightest of bumps. Oh wait. Transmission needs to be in neutral. I think it is. There we go. Well the transfer case is in neutral anyways. Alright. Uh oh. Huh! I might have, well, it's possible I disconnected that wire. We're gonna come back in a minute. Nothing ever just works, does it? Well guys, it only took me like an hour to figure out that I just had a crappy relay. Uh, I went to pick, there we go. Well, you'll see the relay that doesn't have a cover on it. I tried to pull it out and uh, the cover popped off. You can, you probably can't see it, but there's some green corrosion on it, but anyways, I wiggled and jiggled it, and now, so, she's turning over. So the electrical system is fine. I am going to just screw that back on real quick into place uh, and just pop the cover on it. At this point, I feel comfortable uh, getting the coolant stuff in. I got a new one of these as well, because these things, well, I only had one of them to begin with. And I got to find the coolant reservoir that lives over there somewhere. Bolts onto that. Oh, never mind. It's right there. As you can see, I put everything in the smartest possible place and, oh, still had some coolant in there. Always in the most intelligent place possible. 
and never just stuff it off to the side and hope I remember where it was. So good, good thing I kept the bolts in there too, because they're, they're accessible. Oh, I'm a mess. I'm losing my voice. Three days in a row of this and I'm losing my voice. Wow. There are people that have prayed for that to happen to me. So, all right, the wiring was simple. I'm just even more simple than the wiring. So let's get to it. I'm gonna go grab my junk and see what I got. There's my new radiator, which is to my shame, a brick part, but I wanna get my original radiator record because uh, if you look at this side, it looks really nice. If you look at this side, it's just crumbling apart. All the, all the little things in it are dead. And being as it was in an engine that blew up, I don't know if there's metal trash in the oil cooler. So it seemed like the smart maneuver would be to uh, replace the radiator, even with a cheap one for now. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, the new radiator is in. Most of it's plumbed up. I'm missing some radiator hose clamps, or if you're in England, they're Jubilee clips, apparently, for whatever reason. But I'm missing quite a few of those, so I'm gonna bring a couple of the size I'm missing to the hardware store. I gotta, I'm gonna have to take that line off, this line off, and route it the right way. I routed it the wrong way. And when you get your Brit part radiator, it comes with this silly, end on it, it's not the right end to interface with the uh, the seal on the end of these. So luckily I still had my original radiator and I just harvested those off, but they were filthy. So I'm just letting them sit in some diesel fuel overnight to soften it all up. So tomorrow I gotta go to the parts store and get uh, a crap load of oil and coolant and some diesel fuel and Finish up a few things with those lines, fill it all up. Uh, I'm gonna have to, of course I sealed off my uh, uh, thermostat nicely, so I'll have to take that back off again. And I'm going to, I'm gonna fill up the coolant here to fill the block up. Uh, I think that's the right way to do it. Cranker, hopefully get some oil up there. Um, she should start, I mean, there's nothing, there's really not much to it. I mean, the only thing that got me screwed over today was the uh, that uh, freaking relay that just didn't want to do, so. But it is what it is. All right, guys, so um, we got this thing all ready to go. The, the radiator, that's what we call it. It's not actually mounted to anything, so it's just sort of hanging out there. I pulled the thermostat housing off because that's where we're going to pour the coolant in to get the block filled up. That's kind of the way I've always done it, so it seems good. We're also going to fill the reservoir here up full. We got to put oil in it, and we got to put transmission fluid in it, and we got to put a uh, different uh, uh, center differential, yeah, transfer case. There we go. Transfer case fluid in. I've got all those fluids. I wasn't going to do the transfer case or the transmission, but they're going to be spinning because I'm not going to bleed the clutch yet because I'm lazy, so, uh, and we have to hook up the oil pressure gauge. So we're really getting close here. I'm not gonna film any of the putting the oil in because, it, or putting the fluids in, because it's just putting the fluids in. If you wanna watch me make a mess on the floor, you can refer to almost any of my other videos where I dump a lot of crap on the floor. So yeah, that's about it. We're gonna get to it, and hopefully this uh, this goes well. I mean, we're we're, we're real close. We're real close. It's gonna be a good one. Well, I was gonna be so proud about how nothing leaked, but there's a big puddle down there. But apparently I thought it, it looked like it was leaking from behind this, which I was like really not looking forward to dealing with. But it was just this hose clamp here. I tightened it with a screwdriver and there's a point that it just bound up a little bit and I had to use a thing to get it by. That That's really all it was. So keep on keeping on. Yeah, well, I gotta put all the crap I took off back on. Good, good. What I what I needed was more work because it was it was too easy the way it was. All right, guys. So now for the fun part. Also, just some strange thing. Uh, 
Like every Defender, every English car I've ever seen has a, it's a lock, well, a lot of English cars apparently have locking gas caps because gas is so expensive over there, or diesel in this case, but just seems strange to me. I don't know how the gas tank could leak, but I'm just waiting for it to after all of my fun problems, which are, are honestly not really resolved. I think it's still dripping a little bit of coolant, but I think those hose clamps are pretty much knackered, so I'm going to ignore them for today. Of course, this isn't a, this isn't a gas job, so once I get done, uh, you know, filling all this up, I don't get just turn the key, crank it for a little bit, and have it run. No, 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 no. But it's not that far off. So what I have to do is prime the whole fuel system, and then I have to crack the lines of the injectors. I'll show you guys that. That's pretty, it's one of those things that sounds like a big deal. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so bleeding this is pretty simple, but if you haven't done it before, it's a little bit confusing. So. The first thing I did is I swapped out the filter and I pre-filled this because I don't want to pump for as long as I need to. And then you just open up this screw. You don't have to take it all the way out, you just have to crack it loose. And then you'll see there's a little red plunger on the mechanical lift pump. And you sit there and pump that for an hour. Hopefully not, but probably yes. All right, yeah, I'm gonna keep pumping until I get this to the end and then I'll bring you guys back. You don't really wanna watch me sit there and jerk off my Land Rover for 20 minutes. Unless. All right, guys, I, uh, I got the, the, the fuel system bled. I managed to spray diesel everywhere. Luckily, it's not gas. So I just gotta crank until the oil gets from here to here. These are loosened up. So I just have to crank it over and uh, for a little while until I see oil come out of there. So I'm gonna put you guys right here and you can shout at me when the oil starts pissing everywhere. And I won't hear you because that's how time works. Okay. Oh, and the oil pressure got right up to uh, like 45 PSI, which is where it's supposed to. And the glow plugs are right here. So it's not making any uh, compression right now because I want it to be able to turn over as easily as possible for as long as possible. Oh, it's definitely getting oil in the turbo. I can actually hear it. Hmm. Well, let's make sure we got fuel down at the injection pump. That's down there, which you can see. I think that's a 17 mil, which I've been using regularly, so will not be in the box. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, there's fuel pressure there. Okay, oh, I should probably, if I don't peg the throttle, it's not gonna pump very much fuel up to these. So I'm gonna turn over some more with my foot on the floor. Yeah, I meant to run. surprised these aren't peeing yet. Well, you know what? Hell with it. I'm gonna put the glow plugs in. I'm gonna lock those down tight. Somebody talked about this being a self-bleeding system, so it may, I don't know, it may not be doing the right, may not be that how you do this type of uh, pump. 
I noticed there is diesel up here at the uh, top of this one. So I'm just going to put them all down, sock them down, and, and uh, put the glow plugs in and crank it over. And I think, uh, I think we're going to get somewhere with that, finally. Maybe. It's getting late. Alrighty, I'm not overly concerned with checking the, the oil for the turbo return because, I mean, we had 40 PSI of oil for, uh, you know, 30, 40 seconds. We've got a good amount of oil in the oil system. Right. Looks like the coolant system stopped dripping, so yeah. Well, I'd say we're in good shape. Alright guys, well... I didn't hook up the glow plug wires. I don't think that I need them because it's 85 degrees in here right now. I got oil pressure. I got coolant. I got everything else lubricated. I have a nice fine coating of diesel fuel on everything. So, shucks, if that doesn't mean a Land Rover is ready to go, then I don't know how to make a Land Rover ready to go. So, Let's just hope. I'm not going to run it for terribly long either, even if it even if it starts up. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, sh I know why this stupid thing didn't prime. Because idiot face here wanted to make sure that we didn't turn it on prematurely. So, what did idiot face do? He didn't connect the wire to the fuel solenoid. And you know how well it runs without wire at the fuel solenoid? It just don't. So, oh, that's not the plug, that's the plug. Yeah, you can hear it. That was that, okay. Well, it'll take a little while for, for fuel to get from there to there, Jesus. Oh, what a dummy. Okay, hey, at least I got there, you know, even the guy in last place finished the race, so. I mean, I bought Turner Engineering. I mean, I cheaped out on a lot of things on this, but that engine is not something I cheaped out on. That's the nicest rebuilt engine that, as far as I'm aware, money can buy. Uh, you know, there's probably some other bespoke builder that charges $8 million an hour, but I, I didn't buy it from him. So yeah, I got a 50 PSI of oil pressure while it's running. I think the idle set a little low. That's why it was rattling so bad. When I gave it a little bit, just a little bit of gas, it smoothed right out. The throttle was responsive given that the turbo wasn't on. The turbo was spinning nicely. Still feels good. Ah. Now all I have to do is do something about the fact that uh, there's no wheels under there. And you know, the 800 other things that I have yet to do. 
So I don't think I ran it long enough for, you know, anything else to happen. And uh, the thing is to run it in now, which is what you should do, um, I'm gonna take this out on, you know, on heavy inclines, drive it, vary the RPM. That's why even though I just started a brand new engine while I was revving it a little bit, it was mostly just because you don't want to just let it sit there and idle. You want it to move around on that, on that to, to break it in. I also used uh, non-synthetic. So I'll, I'll be using Shell Rotella for this engine forever. But this is a T4. This is a, a, good, a good diesel oil, but it's, a, it's not synthetic. So it'll allow the engine to wear in properly. If you go synthetic right off the bat, I'm gonna go outside here uh, so I don't die of asphyxiation. <laughs> As I was saying, if you, if you use a, a dyno oil to break it in, you'll do a lot better. If you go straight for synthetic, it, it actually does too good of a job. Some things are meant to wear it, especially the rings into the cylinder walls. They're meant to polish each other up. And if you don't wear them in, they'll just glaze over and you'll never get great compression and you'll have a, a fair amount of oil consumption over the lifespan of the vehicle. At least that's what I read. That's what I'm trying, I don't know. At least this thing didn't crank for more than about 30 seconds without, you know, till the oil pressure came up. I did pre-charge the oil filter, which I have never done before, but for something like this, I would. That was exactly the amount of drama that, well, no, not the amount of drama I wanted, but you know, good enough. Uh, I actually did on this for the starter solenoid. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. I'm not gonna fix that right now. I, uh, I ripped the solenoid apart and made it so that I could push on part of it and actuate it. So now I've got a super secret starter button to make it... Well, actually, if I want theft protection, I think I've got the best theft protection in the world right now. So, um, yeah. Didn't really smoke too bad though, considering it's a first startup of a diesel, so. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, you know, hey, come back next week. I don't even know what's going on. I'm, I, I, it's not going to take, I'm not putting this many hours into it next week. That's for damn sure. Uh, this is like something like 20 hours into this video because, because I don't know, because I decided that this is what was going to happen. And it, and it did. So I win. Bye.